parameters on it serve the purpose of saying where this stuff is going to get its values. All right? And it just matches up. The first question mark gets the first parameter. Second question mark gets the second parameter, and so on down the line. Well, one second. So in this case, we got rid of the ID from the list of stuff that we're going to pass it, so I'm going to get rid of the parameter. Yeah, go ahead. Would you have been able to go into to edit your query string uh, through the wizard and just delete it in the insert, click on that way, edit it, and it would have just got a one? I don't know. All right. Um, you, you could get rid of it that way. The problem is, is I'm not sure if that would take care of the parameters or not. So you'd have to make sure it took care of it in both cases. This is, again, why, um, how do I want to say it? Even if you could do it through there, I think it's important to know how you can look at it um, this way. Because through that mode, yeah, you could get rid of the question mark in the insert statement, I think. I don't know. But um, I guess it depends on how we created it originally. Yeah, I don't think they could put it I in there. I don't really first, call. I think it just sort of yeah. So I can go in and I can delete this. Now, a better question is, of course, this framework is so wonderful. It does so many things for you. Why didn't it realize that that was an auto number key and just not put it in the insert statement? And the answer gets back to what I was saying a minute ago. Someone dropped the ball in testing. All right, and, and didn't do it right, all right, or they didn't think of that, or whatever. The problem is, again, you know, it ain't the hammer's fault if the, if the, the, the dresser wobbles, right? It's the carpenter's fault. All right, so let's try this now, and let's hope that it works. It should, but let's verify that it works. So I can go in here and add new poll, category ID of one, question, insert, and it works, I think. <laughs> All right. Do you already have the number one already? One for category ID? Sure. Yeah, I just, I chose one for category ID. How do I know it worked? But is, it that, is that an overwrite then, if you already have one and you just, just well, one isn't the primary key to the, the poll table. One's uh, just a, a foreign key. I could have multiple multiple polls for a category. So I could add in another one, too, if I wanted to. Is it there? I don't know. Let's check. Go to the poll page, exactly. Problem is, is that's still a little clunky, right? Because after inserting, I would think that you'd want to take it back to this page. Yeah. I guess it depends on the specific problem that you're solving and so on. But that's sort of another gotcha that we're going to deal with in a minute here. All right. When I'm done inserting, I probably want to go back to the details page. Oh, I'm sorry, not the details page, the, the, the polls page. Everyone see what I mean with that? In other words, I knew it worked simply because it didn't tell me that it didn't. I don't like that. All right? <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like, I'll call you if I didn't get the check that you sent. <laughs> no, I want you to call me if you got the check or if you have not gotten the check. Right? I don't, I don't want to assume that because you haven't called me, you haven't gotten the check and my water gets turned off or something, all right? Uh, hypothetical situation, by the way. Although times are indeed rather tough, all right? <laughs> um, so, I want a verification that it worked, all right? And for me, the best verification that it worked in this case would be simply taking it back to this one. If I want to add another one, I'll click Add to add another one. I guess in another context, maybe I would want to stay there, and maybe I'll just display a message that said Add successfully. But that's no fun, all right? I'm going to instead redirect it to uh, back to the list. Now, that is if it succeeds. If it fails, boom. What should 
I do instead that fails? Dis display a nice exception. I probably want to validate these things too, right? Um, but again, even still, there could be problems with the database that I can't control, right? There could be um, things that I'm not checking for in validation. Like, I should make category ID a drop down, and I should put a validator on question, all right? So I'll go and do those things, but there's still possibly things that could go wrong beyond those, like a duplicate question name, all right? That's something that I'm not, can't create a validator for. I'm simply going to let it try to do the update and catch it if it crashes. All right. So, if this fails, I want to display a user-friendly error message. What happens if this succeeds? What do I want to do? Take it back to the polls page. Where do you suppose I'm going to put the code to do this? Maybe the answer. Go ahead. Maybe creating hyperlink. Repeat, please. Hyperlink. Oh, not really a hyperlink. When you press the insert. When I, when I hit the insert. So what method do I want to code in the code behind? On click. Well, not, not really on click, because what if I, I, at the time I click it, I don't know if it succeeded or failed. Right. So where do, at what point do I know if this succeeded or failed? On, well, not updated, but inserted. Updated was from the previous examples when we were doing updates. But in this case, we're actually, we're not updating, we're doing an insert. And there's actually a different method for that. Now, again, you may say, well, gee, why are all these different things? Well, again, it's a framework. It sets you up to give you the flexibility to, to, to implement it exactly how you want to. So, just like there is an on item in, uh, deleted, We've seen that one so far. There's an on item updated. There's an on item inserted that we can write code for. And that's where we're going to put the check and take the appropriate action. So, on the details view, am I in the right place? Yeah. On the details view, I will say on item, and again, inserting, inserted, we want to see what happened after it attempted the insert, so it will be on item inserted, <coughs> equals, create new event, <coughs> we look at the code behind file, now we have the code for that, what do we want to do here? Do I always want to redirect back to the polls page? No. Okay. When when do I want to and when don't I want to? If it succeeded. If it succeeded. How do I know if it succeeded or not? Some label. Pardon me? In some label. Well, the label will use to display the error message, but the label can't be used to determine if it succeeded or failed. How do I determine whether how do I determine in the other ones that we did earlier whether it succeeded or failed? We look for an exception object, all right? So, if e dot exception not equals null, that means we have an error. And historic moment, I'm actually going to put a comment in my code. <laughs> Sounds like you're in Star Trek or something. Otherwise, the insert succeeded. Okay? So, we already know what we want to do if we have an error, right? We want to put a user friendly error message and then tell the framework that we got this handled. Oops. And 
one thing that would cause an error here is a duplicate question. So I could say one likely cause duplicate question. All right. Now, so we handle if it's an error, and that should be correct. If it's succeeded, what do we want to do? We want to redirect to the polls page. Does anyone know how to do that? Does anyone know where to look? <laughs> yeah, we could look Google. Let's assume that we're not connected to the internet. It's Armageddon. And we're still writing our programs because it doesn't matter. We're getting it done. All right, because it's due. You'll bring it to me on a floppy disk, right? It doesn't matter. So, we talked about two objects at the beginning of class a request and a response. Yeah. We can, but I guess what my question is, is is that, is the code, is what we need likely to be found in the request object or the response object? Response. Response. Does everyone agree with that? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, why'd you say response? Because it's not request. Because it's not request, all right? <laughs> no, that's bad, I'm sorry. Because it's, it's something from the server going to the client. So the server is going to send the client to a different page than otherwise they would. So, so I know it's a response object, and I go and look here. There's a whole bunch of things on here, but one of them is redirect, and I can put in the URL I want to send them to, which is polls.aspx. All right, so let's try this. I go to insert. I don't put anything in and I click insert. I get my error message. I insert something correctly. And there we go. I guess added to the list. All right. Technically, that is a duplicate. That is a duplicate. It is. Ooh. That's a darn good question. My guess is the database doesn't. Maybe I would. Maybe I didn't implement the the duplicate. Um, the. I don't know. Let's take a look. That's puzzling. Did not, I didn't create the um, I didn't create a, a duplicate index on it so I was mistaken I had intended to but I didn't all right so I stand corrected on that well, good thing you have a button to delete it. yeah well let's go let's go and delete it and let's recreate it with the duplicate index uh, with uh, with that Index, yes, no duplicates. Okay. Now we'll go and try it. I 
said that it was indexed, and given the choice, there's three choices. No, which was what it was said originally. There is yes, allow duplicates, and yes, no duplicates. So I selected uh, yes, no duplicates. Yes. See, like on your insert page, if you had if you wanted a form that where you were going to be doing a lot of inserting, would you be able to mirror that poll page some way or display that poll page on the other page? On this page? On the insert page? Yeah, you could do that. If you were doing repeated data entry, yeah, you could, for example, you could combine the two. Like, the poll table only has like a handful of fields, right? right. So I could actually put this, the, 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 the form to do the inserting, I could actually put that below here, all right? And I could insert and I could refresh that. So yeah, I could, I could rearrange that if, if I was doing that sort of uh, input. I guess what this is originally designed for is, uh, the, the thought was is that if you have a table that has a whole bunch of fields on it, you don't necessarily want to show all those fields on the grid, but you want to click to a details page so you can see all the fields and, and do the editing. So yeah, this is definitely not the only way that you could structure this. Yeah, absolutely right. Okay, we still got a lot of, or we still have a couple of things, a couple of loose ends to get. Um, I'll talk about some of them, and I'll actually do some of them, all right? Because if I go in, I can make the same argument here. Well, let's do one at a time. One, when I go in the insert mode, the category ID shouldn't be a text box, and there should be a validator on the question. So let's take care of that right off the bat. Hmm. We already did that for category ID, right? Why is it working in insert? Because it is a different template. So if we look at category ID, for category ID there is a item template, which is what you see in read-only mode. There is an edit item template, which you see in edit mode. And finally there is an insert template, which you see in insert mode. So we took care of two of those. We didn't take care of the insert. All right. So that's easy enough to correct, right? We just do that just like we did before. I'm kind of grooving to it. I have I have the best ringtone. Um, yeah, someone someone call. It's like, gee, do I give my? I will not give my phone number out on YouTube. I'll tell you that. But after after class, uh, uh, someone can call me. All right, remind me. So let me go delete the text box, and I'll go and I'll add the drop down list. And what do I have to do? I have to go in and edit data bindings because this is going to go to. Now, I have no clue why sometimes this is enabled and sometimes not. I've been working on this for years, and I've not been able to, like, determine a rhyme or reason for that. Maybe try checking it out. Maybe there's already, you know, sometimes you have to have already done it at least once for it to show up. Well, that's kind of lame. <laughs> SQL data source 2, field to display in a drop down. I thought you were 
on to something there. I think if you too bad. I think refresh refresh schema doesn't like I don't know. All right. At any rate, we're there. We're, we're set on that. Now, likewise, I have to go in for the question and edit the template for that. And I'm going to go in and it's okay for it to be a text box. I just need a validator. So I'll go into validation, required field validator. Go set the properties of the validator. Error message must enter a question. And control to validate. Text box two. Now, you might say, like, why do I have to do this for insert and edit? You do, right? <laughs> Quit your whining or we'll do this in, <laughs> we'll do this in old school <laughs> ASP where you had to write all this stuff yourself. Just drag and drop it. Yeah. Because the people at Microsoft couldn't figure out a way to make it easy to do both at the same time. Yeah. Uh, well, well, well look at it. Th like no, they could. No, no. The real answer is they could figure out a way to make it easy to do the same, to, to do both at the same time. The problem is, is what if you wanted to do it differently? If you wanted to do it differently, that would be a pain to do. So it's like, okay, so we'll make it easy to do it differently. And if you want to do it the same, come on, just, just a couple clicks to do it. It's not that big a deal to repeat the step. Now, here's a mistake I noticed a couple people make. All right? A couple people have noticed that their validation, mysteriously, if they put something bogus in, they got the old value for the field in the validation error message. That's because they went in and said edit data bindings for this guy and bound it to a field. All right. When you bind something to the database, that means that you're putting a value in, getting a value from the database, and the value from this control goes into the database. Your validator isn't coming from the database. The text in the validator doesn't come from a database. It simply comes from, um, you know, the hard-coded. Now, it's possible that we could write some sort of validation and, and give an error code number or whatever and look it up in the database, but we're not doing that, all right? We're simply hard-coding our error messages. So the error messages don't come from the database, so we don't bind our validator to the database. So when you see binding, that means taking this and linking it up with the data source. We're not linking that error message up to the data source. We're linking the contents of the text box to the data source. So you would only do what you were just showing us if you had a database of error messages. I guess you could do it then, but I probably shouldn't even have mentioned that because that just muddies the water. For the purposes of this class, yeah, don't bother. All right, let's run this. And I think we've addressed a lot of our problems, at least as far as the insert goes. Add new poll. I can pick that. Question. All right. So we have that going. So I think the insert is kind of where we want it to be. Let's look to see if we messed up the edit and delete at all. Not really, but sort of the same thing would apply here. When we're done with this, we kind of want to go back to that polls page, right, it, it, to be consistent. The other thing is I don't really like the new here, all right? We have a new button on that page. It sort of muddies the issue, and, and, and I don't know. I don't like the new there. So let's go and let's try to achieve those changes. What was the first one? Oh, the first one was when we're done, we want to redirect to the 
polls page. And that should be pretty simple. We can actually put that in the insert and delete and update it. If you succeeded, go back to the polls page. If you failed, stay there and display an error message. That seems reasonable to me. Let's go and try that. Okay, so that worked. Let's try to get rid of... Let's try to get rid of the new... Enable inserting on there. And this could be fun because I, I kind of forgot how to do this. I think what I have to do is this. You're absolutely right. I'll go to my template row. Right. And then Thank you. And delete, the and delete exactly. Very good. So you've gained back your extra credit that you would have got. <laughs> so I go here. Where is that? Ah, here. And in new mode, I don't want the. Uh, and while I'm at it, this delete, I want to put a confirm on. So I will say on client. Oh, I already did that. Okay. I forgot I did that. So we should be in business. When you make the update, the update is as cemented as it's ever going to be. All right. Now, as far as getting back to that page, well, that's what we're doing now on the edit. You know, if I click an edit and I go and edit this to be something else and click update, I go back to that page. So before we didn't have th this ability, so we stayed on that edit page, and you would have had to click back to go back and see this. Now, the other thing you could do is, of course, you could always add a link if you wanted to give the user the option to go back somewhere. So there could be a link on, on that page as well. I have a question. How do you want to handle this? If I click Edit and click Cancel. Is that okay? You should probably have something on the bottom that says, do you want to cancel this? I could confirm, and I could do that before. 